asynchronous anonymous learning, aka your own your own learning, and synchronous lessons, aka live lessons, have thrown math teachers across the country a curveball. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my virtual classroom and platforms for both of these types of learning. Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Williams, AKA The Ignited Teacher. And what I do on this channel is I help math teachers or struggling learners to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase student achievement. So let's talk about your synchronous lessons. Those are going to be your live lessons. So you're going to be teaching kids face to face. Now, the one thing that I figured out about synchronous lessons, it's all about the tools that you are using during this 30 minute time, which is in my case, because my school has said that our live lessons are going to be 30 minutes. It's all about the tools that you're using. One thing that synchronous lessons won't be, they won't be like face to face because you won't have all the time that you need to do everything that you want to do or normally do. Even if you're doing face to face in a classroom right now, you're still not having the same conversations and your lessons don't look the same. They won't have the same pacing or any of that. And that's one thing that our school district has told us that the lessons and activities that you are planning, they are going to take twice the amount of time. So the two programs that I'm going to use for my synchronous lessons are going to be one, explain everything. If you've seen my videos and tutorials while I'm writing on the whiteboard, that's explain everything. You can upload images, you can upload graphs, you can upload anything to explain everything. And it makes a world of difference, especially for math teachers. The second platform that I plan on using is Google Slides with my digital notebook. And I've been working on that. I'm not sure how it works um, or is going to work in the synchronous lesson because I've always used an interactive notebook, but I'm just not sure about how I'm going to set it up. But those are the two main platforms that I plan on using during my synchronous lessons. I don't have that much time, so I've narrowed it down to two. And that's really my suggestion for you as well. If you don't have a lot of time for your synchronous learning. Now, the next part of the virtual learning is the asynchronous learning. Now, this is the what on your own learning for the students. And it pains me because I'm having to put work together and find activities that the children can actually do when I'm not there. So the way that it works in the great state of Texas is that they have to access our learning management system and it basically shows that they have been in attendance and they work on that lesson alone. So what this means to me is that the, stu the work that I actually provide, it has to be overly explicit. And when I say overly explicit, that means that it can't leave room for the students to guess about what they're supposed to do. Now, I have come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to do videos for my asynchronous instruction because, as you all know, I teach the math intervention students, which are tier two and tier three students, which a lot of them are double dippers and they struggle with reading and math. So I'm going to have to do those lessons and instructions with videos, um, just basically showing them how it works. So what I'm going to show you right now is one of my lessons for adding and subtracting integers that I created in Google Slides. So let's go. So for my 
asynchronous lessons, I have created some activities using Google Slides. Now, the first unit that we are working on in Algebra 1 are equations and inequalities. So for this, because I am the math intervention teacher, what I did is I went in and worked backwards through the vertical alignment. And this was actually on the fluency side of it. And my students have to know and understand positive and negative integers. They have to be able to add, subtract, and multiply and divide them. And a lot of teachers tend to feel like that, oh, they have calculators, but it still does not help. The children have to understand the concept of it. So that concept goes back to zero pairs, especially when we're talking about properties of equality. So when you have a negative and a positive, it creates a zero pair. And what this is, is just an interactive activity to give the students um, when they're working on their own. Over here is just text box. They can type in the text to create an equation. And I'm going to have to teach them how to duplicate these so they, they can create the equations and actually share this with me. All of it is movable. And you could teach your upper elementary students this as well. And you're probably thinking, well, how does, how did I get the background not to move? Well, it's actually a an image that I created and made it the background for the slide. So that's how you make them interactive and movable without moving the screen. So that's the concept, you know, right here. And then I move to the next slide. The next slide is actually putting it together with the pictorial and the equation. Um, and this is the important part. And you're probably asking, well, what are they going to use? They're not going to use calculators, that's for sure, because it helps them with the process and really understanding those zero pairs when you're subtracting, adding them to both sides to make sure that that equation is equal. And that's one of the things that the kids don't understand. Um, and it pains me because uh, Algebra 1 teachers tend to think that the graphing calculator is the cure for all, and it's not. I've seen children go in and have graphing calculators and not know what the heck they're putting in there and then wonder why they come up with the wrong answer. It's just not that simple. You have to understand the concept. Now, you might not be fluent with it, but if you understand that you have a negative, two negatives and two positives and they cancel each other out, then you can put that in the calculator and understand, even if you don't know how to subtract it. That's what I'm going for with my kids because they do have some disabilities and some of them, you know, it's hard for them with the fluency piece, but they have to understand that concept. So. This is just one of the activities that I'm working with, with asynchronous, and this is going to be something that I probably will use after we're out of virtual learning. I really like it. It takes time, but as with technology, once it's done, it's done. And these are priceless, I really do believe. Um, my kids are going to like these and is going to make sense to them. So if you found this video helpful, definitely give it a like. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when I upload other videos just like the one you saw. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in my next video.